W what? Uh... Nickelback. Now when I was a kid, I never really had a point where I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna start listening to music now. But something I did do was play video games. And guess what video games had? Well, yes, of course they had Mario, but they also had... <laughs> But eventually that did spark me to think, huh, I kind of like listening to music. Maybe I should, you know, actually listen to music intended to be listened to. Versus music made as a backing track to a Blue Hedgehog versus Egg. But after listening to regular music, I came to a grand conclusion. Yeah, I actually kind of prefer the music from Blue Hedgehog vs. Egg. And now, I probably listen to video game soundtracks more often than regular music. My music playlist on YouTube is probably 80% from video games. And I know what you're thinking, but Matt, what the profanity? What is Captain Toad Treasure Tracker's jungle theme doing in your playlist? Are you trying to catch a disease? And to that, I 100% agree, because it's the exact same song as Super Mario 3D World's jungle theme, and that's already in my playlist. Bruh. But jokes and goofs aside, why is video game music so important? Why is there lo-fi Zelda and chill compilations to relax slash study to? Why does footage of my cat with Tom Nook music fit so well? And what's Wario doing in my playlist? Am I crazy? Well, obviously there's many valid reasons for having Wario in your playlist, but if we think about the big picture for a second, what really makes video game music so... Good. You see, when it comes to music and games, I feel like it has two main points. To A, complement the game in its world without being too distracting, and B, have the player be able to listen to it repeatedly without getting super tired of it and getting an urge to cry after hearing it 50 times. And if the music does tick both of these boxes by matching the game's theme and avoid getting boring, it can really help set the mood and atmosphere for the player. For instance, Breath of the Wild is set in a post-apocalyptic world and takes out the usual... In exchange for wind sound effects, and horse pianos. And as the player, you're wondering, where's all the- <laughs> But then you remember that in Breath of the Wild, Everyone died! Except for the pianist, he's alive, and having a lack of music really helps drive that feeling of death. But you might be thinking, what about a game which uses a mix of different genres of music to create its own identity? That must be illegal, right? Splatoon, like Breath of the Wild, is technically set in a post-apocalyptic world too. But when it comes to its gameplay, or setting, or music... That's not the case! Splatoon's music is kind of like filling a neutral bullet above capacity with everything you can imagine, and a lot of seawater, then twisting that sucker and expecting to explain a point over a blender sound effect until you're left with a delicious soundtrack. The music's almost as if a new race of species gained cognitive functions after the human race went extinct, rebuilt society from scratch over thousands of years, eventually developing their own culture like sports and fashion, and music. Oh wait, that's what it is. Music is weirdly an integral part of Splatoon's world that instead of just having it disconnected from the game, Splatoon has its own in-game music groups that compose these songs as part of their lore. So the music that plays in Splatoon isn't just another track, it's made by a specific in-game artist or band. And now they're taking over the world! What? This wasn't what I meant by immersion! Without these games as soundtracks, they would both give off a radically different tone. Sure, sound effects, visuals, storytelling are all huge elements in controlling the mood and atmosphere of a game, but imagine what Animal Crossing would feel like with... Music can really affect the player's experience with a game. For instance, take any standard turn-based RPG like Pokemon or the Mario and Luigi series. As soon as you hit an enemy or get stopped in tall grass, <coughs> and after hearing this over and over, and over. Even if I'm not playing the game, if I hear that music, I can instantly see the battle, the menus, Luigi not knowing what these boxes are doing above his head. Or take a game like Mario Party. Mario Party, all of a sudden playing this music when you're learning the minigame is purposely done, so whenever you hear it, you're like, oh, looks like it's time to jerk the Wii Remote again. One other really cool thing about video game music, Subtlety. Now when I say subtle, what I really mean is music changing dynamically depending on what you're doing in game. Like how when you go underwater in a game, it usually adds a low pass filter over the music and the sound effects and you slowly die because you can't breathe. Or how getting on Yoshi's back adds additional drums to the song. Or how in Luigi's Mansion the main theme is either hummed nervously by Luigi when he's walking through the spooky corridors. <laughs> And when he's on low health, hummed even more because he's sh bricks.
And you know, this makes sense because he's alone in a haunted mansion and possibly about to die. But when Luigi actually clears a room from ghosts and the lights turn on, he actually starts to whistle the theme instead. Sure, these subtleties may feel like unnecessary details, but who cares? Animal Crossing is another good example of this sort of thing because it has 24 town themes each for a specific hour of a day, which is both an amazing concept, but now a reminder of how awful my sleep schedule is. I'll never hear 8 a.m. again. The extra effort like this really helps you remember the music. My memories of a game can come flooding back just by hearing its soundtrack. Probably my weirdest memory like this is from Mario Kart Wii's character selection. It has this unnecessarily dynamic jingle as you go between selecting your mode, CC, characters, and tracks. And for some reason, I just have a really strong memory of trying to time Mario tapping his feet to the beat of a rhythm. It's the Nintendo equivalent of a DVD logo hitting the corner. One other really cool thing about video game music is that it will sometimes pay homage or reference another song from the game. A good example, I have lots of memories with Mario Galaxy. Hearing the purple coin theme instantly gives me flashbacks to, oh my god, get 100 coins quick, the time is going down, this is going to end horrific- oh, actually, it was kind of easy. And that song did something unnecessarily cool, because if you never noticed, like halfway into the purple coin theme, you hear Gussie Garden Galaxy, which is probably the most recognized song of the Mario Galaxy soundtrack. Pretty cool, eh? And what video game music does that other music just doesn't seem to do as much or even at all are these kind of homages connected to memories of other music you love. Another amazing example is Skyward Sword's main theme, Ballad of a Goddess. You know, you might hear that song and think, yeah, it's pretty cool, I guess, but I don't see anything out of the ordinary. But what if we rewind time? Rewind time. It's rewind time. Oh. Oh, God. Oh my god! This song is literally Zelda's lullaby from Ocarina of Time backwards. That is... That is so cool. Hell, if you really want to see the power of game music, when Smash Ultimate was coming out and there was all those memes about how there was going to be over 800 plus songs, that was no joke. And when Ultimate had its gameplay reveal at E3 2018, I wasn't just excited to see the new characters coming to Smash, but the new remixes. They released a new one on Ultimate's website every Friday, and when it was a song I'd already had an attachment or memory to beforehand, it just made hearing that remix that much more- Ooh, I know this one! And obviously the developers knew that, because with Ultimate's menu system of having the size of a menu dictate what you would use most, hashtag size matters, look what's the biggest icon in the vault! You're exactly correct, it's not movies. Like, they wouldn't put movies as the same side as sounds because there's like three cutscenes and a gajillion songs, including Megalovania now, what the fuck? So a song which was originally made for an Earthbound hack, fun fact I found out today, is officially in a Nintendo game with Ness. What? And if you still need proof of how important all this music is to people, just look at YouTube at all the musicians that were inspired to make remixes and covers of video game music. People all over the world make covers of video game music, and it's not because it's a trend, it's because they like it and it's impacted them in some way. Newsflash for anyone who didn't know, people usually make content about things they like. You don't see me making a jazz rendition of Hot Potato because I don't care about it. No, of course not. But if we're talking about a jazz rendition of Life Will Change from Persona 5, I also wouldn't do that because I have no musical talent. Being able to hear new and different renditions of songs that I have fond memories of, made by other people who have fond memories of it too, just gives me a huge lift in mood and always puts a smile on my face. Heck, I even sometimes listen to video game rips, unironically. Here I come, rougher than knuckles, the best of them, tougher than knuckles. You can call me knuckles, unlike knuckles, I'm chuckle. This is great. Models. Video game music might not be the traditional thing you hear on Spotify or the radio, but in its context, it's fantastic. It can introduce you into so many different genres you wouldn't have listened to otherwise, and you might not notice it instantly, but it enhances the game in so many ways, and it can help create some super fond memories. So, to conclude, I really hope this video doesn't get copyright claimed. 
Yo, you watched to the end of the video? What? You're, you're cool. Thanks. Thanks, bro. <laughs> I just want to quickly say big thanks to all the patrons you can see on the side of the screen. And also, we have brand new merch. <laughs> what? What? Why am I releasing it now? Um, I don't know. I, I've been making some designs for the past, like, you know, six, seven months or so. And I was like, hey, you know what? I want to release these now. So they're out on the store now. The link is in the description if you want to go check them out. Um, I'm really happy with how they turned out. And, and yeah. Along with that, I quickly want to say I'm sorry this video took so long to make it that I haven't uploaded for over a month, and it sucks. But this video wouldn't have turned out nowhere near as good if it wasn't for my friend Kurt helping me write the script, and my friend Jack helping do some backgrounds and, and some cool stuff in the video. So yeah, big shout out to those guys. Check them out. And on that note, bye. <laughs>